Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday friends and happy holidays! Today we are needle felting these adorable little ballerinas that you can also make ornaments. They're so fun, they're quick and easy, they're sparkly on the tree, they would look great on a baby mobile, and yeah, we're gonna have some fun. So thank you everyone so much for showing up. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas, but as you can see, we have friends all over the world checking in, everyone's saying hi and chat, so please do participate and say hi. If you participate in the live chat or comment down below in the replay, you get a chance to win some fun prizes. So we're gonna give away some prizes right now from last week. I wanna say a big congratulations to Caroline Owsley and Tammy Pop. Uh, last time, it wasn't last week, but two weeks ago, we did these needle felted zipper ornaments and so, so much fun. So you gals, if you already got the zipper kit, I think we're giving away the needle felting sweet uh, cozy ornaments. You get to choose, just contact us. So let's say hi to some friends. Hi to our friend Diane in Washington. Thank you so much for being here, girlfriend. Brenda in California, always regular on the show. Glad to have you. Susan in Connecticut, Fiona in Australia. So she has to go to work. Boo, well, you can watch the replay. <laughs> anyway, Janice is in Canada, in Alberta. Jessica in Massachusetts. I think we have a couple of people up there in Massachusetts today. Thanks y'all for being here. Our dear friend Maureen. Linda, it's your first show. Thanks for being here. Everyone say hi to Maureen. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we also have Mary Ann in Australia, Allie in Kansas, Chris in Arizona, Phil is in California, and everyone else. Thank you so much for being here. So this is an interactive show. As I mentioned, please do offer your ideas in the chat. Um, Holly's going to help coordinate all of your communications today. And the magical fairies are all lined up to show you some skin tones that you might consider for your own needle felted dolls. So the first up is the magical fairy Anne. <laughs> Yay! Hey y'all, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. We wanted to share with you our the skin tones that are available in our MC1 batting. We do have a skin tones category available on our website under the MC1 category uh, that lists all of the skin tones that we have in one convenient place. You can see all of them. This is our full selection of skin tones. Starting from the top down, we have dark chocolate, espresso bean, clay, caramel, latte, suntan, pale peach, <laughs> Pe uh, peachy and then pale peach, as sand and linen. And I also want to take this opportunity to introduce you to my buddy, the Jax here. Jax is a magical woodland fairy that loves helping guide people. If, you, if you're ever lost in the forest and you feel a, a gentle nudge in the right direction, <laughs> it's this guy. He's got your back. And Jax is made with espresso bean. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. We hope you have a lot of fun. Next up is Fairy Angela. Woo! Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Alda. Um, back in her village, she was the colorist. She helped out everyone pick out beautiful colors. I mean, just look at her hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now she hangs out in the shop with us. And just so you can kind of see skin tones a little bit more, she's made from MC1 sand. All right, and up next is Fairy Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, hope you're having a good week so far. I wanted to share our Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus here. They were made using a seven part, it's seven part, mm -hmm. doll tutorial on our uh, YouTube channel. They're made with pale peach and they're super cute, lots of fun, super cute. Yeah, and then since we're making ballerinas today, I did have a question for everybody. <laughs> the look on Marie's face. <laughs> what type of train do ballerinas ride in? What, what type of train, train do ballerinas ride in? A tutu train. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Can I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies? This is 
our crew. We have a lot more, but we only had time for three today. And um, man, they just keep me smiling all week long. So thank you all so much for being here today. We are going to make these cute little needle felted ballerinas and we're ready to jump right in. So I hope you are too. There is a kit for today's project. Um, you're gonna get to choose your skin tone uh, from a few skin tones, not all nine skin tones, but a few of our skin tones. And you're also gonna get to choose color for the hair. Uh, and if you don't want the kit, uh, you can just get the PDF portion. This time we did outline, so we gave you some size guides, and we also outlined the steps that I'm gonna be going through today. So if you wanna grab that, there's a link in the description. You can jump over there and move to that. Cool. So we're gonna get started. Uh, thank you all for being here very much. Thank you for uh, checking in. We're going to watch the live chat. And let me show you the first thing we're going to do with these little dollies is we're going to, they're made over an armature, but they are made to be very durable. Um, so I'll show you how we do that. And we are preparing a replay for this show. So that will also outline all of the supplies and the replay. I shouldn't say the replay, but the condensed version. We're looking for a name for that. We want to start a new uh, playlist for the condensed version, but um, will be like just the tutorial portion. So we're working towards that. The first thing you want to grab is some 22 gauge uh, wire armature and they should be 16 inches long are what we're working with. The doll ends up being about five inches tall. Here's my two little dollies. So you only need one per doll. Grab some wire cutters and floral wire is what we're using. And then of course, like a measuring tape so you get there. The first thing we want to do is we are gonna cut our wire into two pieces and let me get them just off to the side here. We're gonna cut them into two pieces. So one end will be six inches and one end will be 10 inches. So just give it a cut at the six inch mark. We are going to take our 10 inch wire and fold it right in half. Now, for this portion, we're gonna fold it in half and I'm doing something a little different than I normally do. So watch with me here. We're changing up the way we make these little dollies because I've made so many that I figured out I like to do it a little differently. So we're gonna form a little top loop here and that should be about a half inch. And then I'm going to just leave that part, fold it in half and Let's see, I'm getting, we're, we're a little close. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to leave a little spot there, about a half inch, and then I want you to give the wire just two twists. One, two. Because I want this little dolly to have a neck, and in the past I think they didn't quite have enough neck. So we're going to give two twists there, and then we're gonna insert this wire for the arms. Now, this is a little long for the arms, but we're gonna deal with that in a minute, so just basically shove this up there in a little fold and then we're going to twist the body down a few more inches um, or a few a little more distance so wrap it as tight as you can make it nice and tight and then twist these two wires so they twist equally now in the um, pattern in the pattern I, I show you how uh, to make this body and let me grab this for you here so you can see you're gonna get a little guide and it'll show you that you want uh, to leave about, it's between, I wanna say two and seven eighths to three inches for the legs. So you can use this as a guide. And I'm gonna twist mine down a little bit more and just twist that tight. Now the arm wire is kind of flopping around, but don't worry about that for the moment. What we're going to do, if you want to secure it really tight, if you don't secure it, do what I'm going to show you, then it's going to kind of teeter-totter. It's okay, but it would be a little bit better if you go around the torso very tight, one full turn. So then go, say, across the chest, take the left arm, wrap it around the chest, and all the way back. And then it's pretty tight there. It's a little better. but. This is where we're going to take our floral tape. Um, 
if I can find the end. Always fun finding the end. <laughs> You're kidding, like I can't find the end of the floral tape. <laughs> Should have planned for that. Um, here we go. It doesn't need to be a full, a full thickness. Usually I cut it, but I'm just gonna start this right there. When you do the floral tape, go across one shoulder, wrap around the shoulder. If you haven't worked with floral tape before, pull it tight, that's the key. Go around one shoulder, come around the torso, and then go up around the other shoulder. This is all we want, is just to kind of seal that little portion right there. It doesn't take much floral tape. Okay, there we go. It's a little gummy, which is what I like. It helps the wool stick to the wire, but this is a covered wire and it does come in the kit and we also have it in the shop. Okay, cool, so now that we have this made, we want to wrap this with our skin tone. Today, I'm gonna, for this little doll, I'm gonna work with Suntan. She's Suntan and she's Espresso Bean. And the key here, y'all, is very, very thin pieces. Very thin, thin, thin pieces. So here I have a little blob of the MC1. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just pull off a thin strip, just like that. And we are going to just tease it out so that it is a very thin, thin and narrow. And if you have any little bits of vegetable matter, since this piece is so tiny, now is the time to just get those out. So we're gonna draft it, which means we're gonna kind of pull those fibers just a little further apart. And um, this, I showed you what we're about to do this time, uh, last time too. So before I go forward, I'm gonna cut my arms. Now, in the pattern, I show you how to cut, where to cut the arms too. And right now, this is about uh, two and a half inches long. So depending on how long uh, you want, because we wrapped around the body, depending on how long you want the arms to be, you can go ahead and clip them. Like mine, I usually clip at, um, to between two and a half to three inches, depending on where you want them, and we're gonna fold these back. So if you want them shorter, clip them now. I'm gonna skip it for the moment, and here's what we do. We start just about a half inch or an inch from the end of the wire. You're going to put the wire on top of the wool and fold it back, and then just twist a couple of times towards the end of the arm go towards the end of the arm. Now, don't make this too thick. Notice that this is thin. I'm controlling it so there's no twist and there's no air. So tension, we're pulling tension here. And then what we're gonna do is bend the tip of this arm back. So use your needle nose pliers if you want or use your fingers and give that a pinch. So now the arm is rounded. If you don't round it, it's always gonna find its way to poke back through. And now we're going to continue twisting and notice I like to twist the body and not try and wrap the wool because this gives me the greatest control. Go for a thin, even, non-lumpy layer to cover this entire arm. Go all the way back into the torso and notice that I'm not losing tension the entire time. If you're working with something like the MC1 batting, it really grips onto itself, um, which is very, very helpful for keeping things kind of in place. When you get to the torso, and notice you need enough to get to the torso, if you start at the hand, then you can come back and anchor it to the body. If you start at the body and go out to the hand, then, then you could end up losing where you terminate and not having an even run. So start at the hand and work your way back to the body. And when you get to the body, just go ahead and come around the torso. So notice I'm going under the arm, I'll go over the shoulder once and then around the body. And I've never, I've never come loose yet. So this is fine. I'm actually gonna tear, you can tear this balance off or you can keep going so that it's all attached. And I'm just dry felting it in my fingers a little bit. Now, if you want your arm a little more thick, then what you can do is run another layer the same way. Just start right about here, but you don't have the fold, and make another thin layer right on top. So that's optional and up to you, depending on how skinny you want your arms and such. You're gonna repeat the same with the other arm, and you're gonna do the same thing with the leg. So you're gonna just wrap 
uh, each arm and wrap the leg. You also want to wrap this neck down to the body before the, the body gets too thick. In fact, I do like to start at the neck, and I'm sorry I didn't do that, but let's just do it here. So for the neck, you want a little tiny piece and no vegetable matter again because she's so tiny. Now I know some of you are probably asking already, what about the needle felting part? And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. What I'm gonna show you what we do here. So Here's what I want. I want to wrap this neck, but I don't want to wrap it all the way up. I want to leave most of this loop portion bare. This is what's different from our last dolls, even from our witch and our little bee fairy. So I want you to start right here at the very, very base of the neck. Give it a couple of twists. And just like that so you don't want to see the wire you do want a nice little neck and then you want to come around the body and wrap around the body so consider doing the neck first i did mean to do the neck first actually wish i could go back everybody's appreciating your your neck <laughs> yeah you need a little neck you need a little neck on the on the ballerina so you're going to do the neck down to the torso arm arm leg leg and the legs are going to get the very same bend that this one did so this is the little body the difference is here once you do the arms you're going to come back and add more wool to the body and you're going to needle felt the body we're going to needle felt the body but the arms we're going to treat uh, let's make the head before we do that but we're going to treat the arms with a fabric hardener so that and the legs so that they don't come undone so once your body is done like this all the way wrapped let me move my dollies out of the way just for a second we'll bring this in and do you have a second for a couple of questions about the armature um, somebody had asked about sure if you could use chenille stems if you use chenille stems she's going to be very bendy so you can use chenille stems but chenille stems are very floppy and these have uh, more strength okay yeah so ideally the 22 gauge wire is the lightest i would go yeah the lightest I would go on that. So what you're going to do is once you have all the the arms wrapped and your little body looks like this, you're going to continue wrapping around the body and needle felt it either using like your fine needle or your this needle. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cover the body. You just want it about as thick, I would say, as your pinky finger. So wrap more wool until it's about as thick as your pinky finger and notice that we have this portion open, the neck, and the legs. So I'm going to set this aside while we make the head. The head we're going to make out of core wool and you don't have to um, but it will make your wool go further. You can just use your skin tone but if you use core wool it will go further. Now we're just going to make this about one inch. So spread your wool out, roll a little ball, needle felt it very tight and before you go too far start needle felting. You can use a 36, a 38 star, a 38 spiral, a 38 triangle, whatever you like to make a nice dense shape, use that needle. So notice we just roll and tuck, roll and tuck. Don't go too big because we're going to be putting a skin tone on top. So better to start a, a little smaller than you think you need so that you get that shape. And you want it for this little dolly I make them very round so we're going to needle felt this down until you have a perfect little ball keep needle felting this until it's nice and firm this is what you're going for a little nice firm round ball so keep needle felting your ball all the way around until you get a nice little firm shape and then we're going to cover it with our skin tone so here's my skin tone you only need a little tiny strip and how i do it is just it's just a little thin piece we're just going to roll it around so that you have a slight overlap just like that and then use your fine needle this is your fine needle, ours is yellow. Carol asks what color needle, ours is yellow for the fine needle because it's going to leave the least amount of needle marks and you're going to just start at one side and work your way around. 
Don't jump around too much. Go all the way around the sphere first. If you have vegetable matter, you can pull it out. It just depends on whether it's gonna be the front of the head or the back of the head, or the top of the head, because the top of the head won't show. Do you have any tips on um, how to make a perfect ball and not make it lopsided? You, do, in order to make a perfect ball, you've gotta just keep, so here's, see how this ball, I mean, exactly what, it, this is about as round as you're gonna get, so just, you're going to, everywhere it's sticking up, poke it down. You've got to constantly move the ball and look at the angle, you know, look at the different shapes and look at this horizon line. So if it's poking up there and not round, then turn it, see how that's poking up, then needle flop that down. So that's how you make a round ball is I always look at the horizon line and continue to poke that down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's cover this. And what you want to do is get the whole, this whole around the part laid down. And then when you get to the ends, you can just, I just like pinch it and then pull off the excess. So there's not too much. You just don't want that too bulky. And then needle felt that down. So if the underneath side is nice and firm and a nice shape, then your outside will be nice and smooth if you're top coat of wool isn't a fiber that will needle felt smooth. Our MC1 batting is um, short, crimpy, and will lay down beautifully. Okay, so needle felt your entire head, keep needle felting it until it's very smooth. You don't want it to be rough. You want it to be very, very smooth, nothing loose. So here's a couple of colors. You can look at, I made, this one is actually a little tall, but here's a couple of skin tones. We showed you some of the skin tones. So this is, um, this one is clay. So she's espresso. Here's clay, caramel, suntan, pale peach, uh, peachy and pale peach. Espresso, clay, caramel, suntan, peachy, and pale peach. Now there's more, but there's a range of skin tones that you can look at there. Okay, so we're working with suntan. Now, before we put these two together, we are going to treat our arms and our legs because this is going to be an ornament that you use over the years, so we want it to not be easily roughed up. And we didn't needle felt those arms, we just wrapped them. So. Uh, let me get this little one. This little one that we did, you're gonna do it once your whole dolly is made. And I'm just using a sandwich baggie here, whatever you have. We're going to get um, Aileen's Fabric Stiffener and water, a 50-50 solution I make, and I just put it in a little jar like this. So this is my little Aileen's 50-50, and I just have this baggie here so that I don't mess up my foam. This is all I do, is I put my hand in there, and I'm going to tap, 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 tap it onto my appendage, whatever it is, my arm or whatever. Just like this. I'm gonna answer some questions in just a minute when we set this down. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do is just like this. You're gonna do the arms and the legs. There's no need to do the torso. And then set it to dry. Set it to dry overnight on something that won't, that won't get gummed up. So you're, I like to do the arms and the legs overnight and then I'm going to attach the head. That's up to you. So you're gonna do arms and legs and that's all and let it dry overnight and you end up with this, this little baby right there. Okay, so this is going to ensure that if this gets handled over the years, it's not going to get roughed up. And then we're going to attach the head. Um, alternately, you could do, you know, put this on first and then, and then do the arms and legs, that's fine. Um, someone asked how firm is this bead? It's pretty darn firm, so you can see the whites of my you know, fingers and the ball is not distorting. I like to make those very firm. And here's a good reason why. So we are going to now attach this head with the use of our awl and a glue gun. I, I put this little piece of tape on there just so that I don't plunge too far and make too big of a hole and it's about a half inch mark. That's just my marker. And find the part of the, the I usually will choose like if something looks flatter or smoother or cleaner, I'm gonna choose that for the face. And then we're just going to plunge our awl right into the bottom. 
you pretty much want to get this on the first time if you can this this attachment part so get this on because once you, you know if you put it on and off the body you just find that it tends to rough up the fibers okay so get a nice clean hole no the stiffener really doesn't change color what you want to do is just um, if you put too much like this one is actually a little heavier than some of my other dolls then you can kind of tell uh, it, it, if you put too much it kind of shows so practice a little bit and I'm um, just using a little ironing pad here, it's a silicone surface so that I don't get glue on my foam. And what I'm gonna do is just put a little glue right on the neck, on the, what is the neck, just the very top. You don't need so, you don't need so much that it's like oozing out. Uh, and then just attach them. Now, there we go. So now our ballerina is gonna have at least a little bit of a neck and we can, so if you dry the next night, once you have her all finished, hopefully that shows up pretty good. Do you have any suggestions of what they could use if they don't have an, an awl? If you, yeah, no. If, <laughs> if you don't have an awl, you can try plunging it with a, four, a 32 triangle needle or something really, you know, really sharp like that. But you want to try and get a get a hole in there. The other thing is, I suppose you could have, you know, you could pre-wire it like we've done in the past and run the wire down the body. That's that's definitely an option. Okay, so once this is you set this to dry overnight, then what we want to do is start getting her clothes on. Now there's a couple of different ways: uh, slippers with laces or slippers without laces. That the laces takes a little bit longer, but I'm going to do my best to show this to all of you, to all of you, for all of you, and bring in my my sparkly bowl of treasures. We're going to start with the bodice, and for the bodice, I have chosen a about a one and a half inch ribbon. Um, and what we're going to do is I fold it in half and then I get these two little silver bits. You can show both silver, you know, both silver edges or just one. And we're going to shove this up under the arms just as far as we can. I had a couple people ask if you could use fabric glue instead of a glue gun do you have any um i i so i'm just suggesting that you use either a really strong fabric glue or a glue gun the glue gun just gives you fast results and allows you to kind of keep on moving so notice we're going to shove the ribbon up under here up under the arms and then we are going to uh, i'm going to go ahead and just glue it right to her back uh, i'm just going to offset from the center a little bit and then we'll cut this. So this is this ribbon is kind of stringy, and this ribbon is wired, but I usually just pull the wires out because you don't need the you don't need the wires. So I'm just going to put a little drop of glue right here. And get that back there, hold it, and then do the other side. Now, yes, you could needle felt an outfit, but this is a Christmas ornament, you know, in a Christmas dress, and I really like the sparkly shinies on the tree. For me, that's just like the bomb <laughs> when it's when you have an ornament that's sparkly. So I'm cutting that loose, and then if you want a real clean edge, then you can fold this under. Just pull it tight. You can fold it under and then glue it so it's gonna be right there. We had a few people suggest using an ice pick if they don't have an awl. Yeah, absolutely. But then I saw someone else says we're showing our age. I know. Like, I see that too. Do, do, they, do they don't exist anymore? Because, yeah, we had ice picks. I yeah. still have an uh -huh. ice pick. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, there we go. All right. So you're going to do the, do the back and just pull it up before it gets too far. Go ahead and pull it up. And that's our little bodice. Now... Um, someone asked, does Aileen's come in the kit? No, we, we can't include a dab of Aileen's in the kit. Sorry, we can't do that. Okay, so for the body here, now it's optional whether you cover down her legs. On this little girl, I did not. And on this one, I did add some down the legs. So it's really up to you if you want to add any more ribbon so that if you're, now that we do have a little treatment for underneath the skirt, so you're not really going to see. But if you want to go down her legs, then we're, you can wrap your ribbon here and do that too. So I'll do it just for, do my best to do good time. 
Um, we don't sell the alls yet, Lily, but they're they're on the way. So they're coming, but we don't sell them yet. Um, just a good, nice, sharp all is is all you need. But yes, all is all you need. Huh? huh. That's all you need. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. So wrap around. You don't have to glue, glue, glue everywhere, but you can either wrap around the legs like this, or you can also wrap around the thighs if you want to give her like a. You see how here I did little pants? It's totally up to you, like a little shorts, um, but you're gonna have to glue it here to the body somewhere. How are we on time? I may not keep going. Uh, we're pretty good on time. Um, I should be on slippers already. So what I'm gonna do is not, I'm just gonna stop right here at the top of the waist since I've kind of demonstrated, and then if you wanna wrap shorts, go up like this. So I need to, I need to jump to the slippers portion here, so. Now slippers, yeah, anyway, let me finish this little part and we'll just put that on there. Okay, so that's just gonna cover her a little bit or you could do more of, of the same ribbon. The kit just comes with enough little ribbon for one of these little dollies. Now we've given you some uh, felt and you're gonna cut this into a two and a half inch circle and again, you can use your, we have your little pattern guide here for the head if you want. So you can see how big to make your head. And then this is a little guide for what we call the underskirt. This is how you're gonna cut out that felt for the underskirt. And what you wanna do here is just fold it and fold it. And you wanna make the tiniest little nick right there on the top. And then I just, I suppose, you know, for the head, you could try your scissors, but they get wide, you know, pretty fast or one end of your scissors. So. I'm gonna make a little hole, and this is going to be her underskirt. It's just gonna kind of give her some little discreet covering <laughs> and uh, add a little um, dimension underneath what's the tool, the tool bit that we use for the skirt. So depending on how high you want this to be, you can go ahead and pull that up. And you can do that before you wrap the, the bottom part too. It's totally up to you. Now let's look at the slippers portion. And the slippers, as I mentioned, there's a couple of ways you can go with the slippers. Um, what I like to do for the slippers, and we might need to come in just a little bit here. Okay, so for the slippers, what I like to do first is go just right over the toe to trim off any we're just gonna do a portion of the slippers and then, um, and then come back. So we're gonna go right over the toe, so front to back or, or back to front. It's okay if you just need to do it in pieces. Front, and then back, ow. <laughs> The danger I know it's it's so much harder on camera to hold all this stuff. Okay, here we go. Um, back. I just don't want to stand. My cord is just bent. And then trim. Just do front and back, and then trim. Now, if you want to lace, and we won't really have time to lace, but if you want to lace, let me show you this. If you want to lace the slippers like this little girl. Uh, I won't do it because I won't have time to do both. Then what I do is I start the lace here in the side, glue that down. I'll just put a drop of glue right there and then go up the leg, cross over, go around. You want to make sure you're on the front where you do the cross and then you're going to flip it over, glue that portion right there, and then trim it before going to the next phase. So it would take a, it will actually, let's do one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one, I'll do this one because we can terminate right here. It does help to put a little drop of glue on the back too. I'll show you. So we'll do that. Yes, the laces are getting a lot of love. I know, they're so cute. When I, I didn't do the laces at first and I did a couple of ballerinas and then I, then I saw how I wanted to do it. So there, and then this one, I would have just put this drop of glue first. Yes, you're gonna get glue on your fingers. It's gonna be warm, it won't kill you. 
Okay, so we have that little bit of a, a lace action. And then I like to actually go back around the slipper. You don't have to, but I like to go back around it. So go just go around at least once and I start it in the back so that you can't see it. Get off any extra glue. So we'll start right here. Here. And then you're just gonna go around and cover those two sides. I think we're going to see a lot of these with some fairy wings and some butterfly wings. As yes, yes, seen. yes. So wings, if, you, if, you're, if you're interested in wings, I encourage you to come back to next week's show because I do have something. Oh, see, I forgot to do this part. I'm going to show you on the, what to do on the laces. Um, come back next week because there will be wings, but it's going to be a bigger project and something I've been promising for a long time. So um, if you're interested in wings, we're going to have some fun patterns for you next week, some optional patterns. Now, wherever's the back of the foot, wherever you're lacing on the back, right there, that's where you can put like one tiny drop of glue to help hold it in place. So one little tiny drop right there. No one will even see it. Or you could put a rhinestone there or something if you want. So one tiny drop of glue will hold that lace in place. Okay, so that's how we do the slippers. I won't have time to do both, but let's jump to the next portion, which is she needs her tutu, right? I hey, know she needs a tutu, especially a sparkly one. Like okay, that. so this is our tutu fabric. Um, it's glittery, and we're giving you. You're gonna have like a 12 inch by six inch, so it's a six inch wide um, tool, and then we're giving you 12 inches. Let me open it up here so you can see it. 12 inches here. So here's what you're gonna do. Move your dollies. Okay, someone says maybe make the tutu longer. That's up to you. You can make the tutu longer. I'm gonna show you how to make it short. So the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and cut this fold. And then we're going to fold. You can fold and cut again. And then you can, you can fold and cut again if you want. But what we're gonna do is cut half inch um, cut little half inch strips, approximately half inch strips like this, out of the whole thing. Now, if you want to make your tutu longer, then you can just stop here, cutting cutting the whole thing into all these strips. Um, but if you want to make them short like mine, then go ahead and cut these in half. So cut your entire length of the tool like that until you have all these pieces. And then you're gonna take a long length of your ribbon and um, we're going to tie them onto the, the, the ribbon. I did make a, an adult size tutu like this a few years back. Start in the middle and work your way out um, and because you're gonna wanna shove these together very tight. I have so much glue on my fingers. <laughs> it's kind of slowing me down okay so what you're going to do this does stretch so you pinch these two ends and then you pull this and then it's kind of like a stop and start so you grab it and then you're going to pull these two ends through the ribbon uh, bear with me I'll do a couple and then I'll jump to one's already done so pull and you're going to get this so just keep doing that over and over and over and shove the pieces close together. Um, yes, there's going to be glitter everywhere. When I made the adult size fairy costume a few years back for an art bra event, there was glitter all over my house. It's so much that it, it, uh, it spawned a sort of a spontaneous creative writing project. <laughs> and I, I, wrote about, I wrote about the glitter incident. It was pretty funny because it was everywhere. It's a much bigger tutu. So this is a little easier to see. It's a little tricksy, so just grab it like this and then pinch it with your fingers. Cool. This is when it's short. Now, you could make them longer and then cut them short, but you lose a lot of the tool. 
Yes. Oh, I just said, Leslie says it's not Christmas without glitter, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to do this over and over and over again until you end up with this. So if you keep, if you do this entire batch of tool and you keep tying it on, you're going to end up with a very full skirt, just like that. So keep going, gather your glitter. Maybe you can put it in a jar and use it somewhere else. Now we still need our glue gun. And um, you see, it's not all that short, really. It's not, you know, once you get it all done and then you pull it, it's not all that short. And just center it on the front, however high you want it up on the waist, high or low. And then you can wrap it all the way around the back. Mm -hmm. See, Karen was saying that you could possibly leave the tool a little bit longer if you were having trouble feeding it oh. through there, and then, oh, and then yeah. cut it off later. Yes, it's just that you waste more. This is true. Yeah, I did, that's what I did initially with all of mine, and then I just bared down and did it so I didn't lose so much. So now I'm not going to tie a knot because that actually just creates a, a lot of bulk on this little dolly. I'm going to go ahead and glue this right down. So leave a little room. Hit it with your glue gun. Wrap this over and let that dry. And then you can cut off this excess. I mean, you can use it if you want, but I'm cutting it off so that I have room to put the other side on. Yeah. There, wrap all the way around. Super cute. I'm gonna cut this off and glue that whole little part down there. It's a little, it might be a little longer than I actually needed, but I don't mind that. And secure it. Okay, now, man, she's looking so cute. I could let the glue on my fingers dry. You can shove this up as far as you want it and fluff her little skirt. Oh, I didn't get it tight enough. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Let's see if I can undo it. There we go. I better pull it a little tighter. that end okay now one more part of her outfit and then we'll see what questions or ideas y'all have shove this up under there get it right where you want it but you can see that little wool skirt can help give some body to the um, tutu and if you want to glue that in place you absolutely can the underneath part and then also in the kit we're giving you this cute little bow um, that you can attach right here to her skirt or wherever you want you can put it in her hair if you want um, but I like to put it right to one side of her skirt that's a perfect bow <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna tie that <laughs> You did? <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't look in your magical bowl of trinkets first. <laughs> I know. I couldn't tie a bow like that if I wanted to. So again, if you want to glue the, the underneath part, you can. And you can have fun posing her arms. But now let's look at her head. And oh, by the way, her face is going to pick up glitter until you clear off the desk. Um, okay, good. Yes, people are saying perfect for an angel. Yes, wings, wings. We just, we decided not to put wings on this one. And as I mentioned, our project next week will have wings. We said that today was going to be the long version, but it isn't. Uh, today is the short version. Next week, next week might be longer. Okay, for the hair, we're giving you some options for the hair and we are using merino top. So let me set her aside. We're using merino top. We have, I think this is uh, milk chocolate. This is milk chocolate, barn wood, and sand dollar. Uh, colors you might consider for the hair. So today I think I'm going to use sand dollar. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to get some skewers. It can be barbecue skewers, uh, fruit skewers, apple skewers, whatever speaks to you. And also some um, thread. So what we're going to do, there's a couple of ways you can prepare your hair. Um, as an example, this little dolly, hers are made on the apple skewer. I have some made on this skewer. I'll show you on the apple skewer and then we can also tie braids. These are just some ideas. We do have a hair, we have a hair video somewhere in our dolls. We do. Yeah. Somewhere we, we have a hairstyles. I just you can saw search. It. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Pull whatever lengths you want. I think the longer the better. Uh, so we're gonna pull a length and um, this one will braid. 
Um, and then the next one, um, we're gonna braid this one. Get those out of the way. There's gonna be glitter in this hair, but we're just gonna have to deal with that. Okay, so this is what I do. Um, we're just gonna put the ends together and I'm going to use my thread to kind of hold everything together. You can, um, you could use wire if you want, but in a minute I'm gonna tell you why I don't, so. <laughs> I, have so much, I have so much glitter on my hands that it is hilarious. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just, um, I'm gonna tie the ends of this hair together and I just make a loop like that and then pull this through just pretty much like we did the tutu, pull it tight and then just do that again. And that's gonna, I just wanna hold those ends together and have something that I can easily remove. So do it twice if you want to. Then I'm going to anchor it down with something heavy, just like that, and then braid it. So you all know how to braid, just braid tight and make sure this is smooth. Pull, you know, over the middle, over the middle, over the middle. So braid that hair until you get to the end. How are we doing on time there, Holly? Okay, I'm late. We're I'm late. Just yeah. a little bit. I can't figure Okay, so keep braiding until you get a solid braid. And then the oh. other thing you can do, here's my, here's my braids. And then for this little dolly, I wrapped it around a, a skewer like this one. So all we do is take that hair, take a long strip, and where you can secure the secure the end with string um, but you're gonna wrap it around the skewer you can tie that off with string or just get it to grab onto itself and then wrap it around the skewer just like that now take all of your hair all of your pieces for your hair so this one is very um, dense these guys I have all of these, take all of your hair and then submerge them in water. And we'll show this, just submerge them in water so they get wet. And then I put them in a bowl uh, into the microwave for two minutes and then I repeated for another two minutes. So um, these guys have all been microwaved for two sets of two minutes and then dried right here. So let's bring this little dolly in and let's pull her braid. So these were wetted and then submerged in, uh, so they were submerged in water and then put in the microwave for two minutes. So I'm just gonna cut my strings here. Now you can also, I think we put in the instructions, you can always, you can also bake them. Some people bake them in the oven at 200 degrees um, for two hours or whatever. I just nuke it here at the shop, which is the only place I have a microwave. Um, but I do have a, you could use a toaster oven if you want. And one thing about this hair, because it's merino top, you could also do this with yarn, by the way, like a nice shiny, you know, cotton yarn or silk yarn. Um, one thing about this is sometimes these little bits of hair kind of stay, if you will, you know, and you just might need to cut them to get them loose. So it's not felted, it's just kind of been heat set into a shape so that we get some nice um, shaping to it, make it poofy or kinky or curly or whatever. Well, I'm all about the poofy hair, so. Holly. And you are? <laughs> Holly says she's all, now see these little cross fibers? If they get annoying, so rather than tear, then I just cut them so that they don't, one, slow you down trying to unravel this thing, um, but it does take a little bit of time. And you could make these thinner. So you can make cute, tight, curly spirals. You can make it kind of kinky, wavy like this, whatever you want. Um, you can have the hair braided on the doll. Like I said, we do have a little show where we brought out a lot of our little Waldorf dollies and showed a variety of hairstyles. Um, you can also split this thickness before you put it you know, back on her head. And you don't need to use all this length. Like you could keep this in a braid and then just put this part on. Like how long do you want her hair to be? You want it to be half that length? Need, we need a little more. I think a lot of people like just the braid. They yeah. were very impressed with your braids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah, you can just put the braid, but I wanted to show how you can do something besides putting locks on. You know, you can have the colors you want. You can create a complex hairstyle. So you can have a braid and the, um, you can have a braid and a bun, you know, all that stuff. So I'm actually probably going to cut this right here because I think that's just about long enough for her hair. 
Let's see if I can just get her undone. Thanks for your patience, y'all, while I unravel this. I'm just gonna snip that off. And we just have time to look at this one little way to get the hairstyle on. So I'm gonna cut the rest of this in the essence of time. Okay, so here we are with our hair. You're welcome to split this again if you want, and you can trim off the ends. Like if that's just too long, give it a snip. Go ahead and tear that apart, just like that. And when I put the hair on the dolly, I always like to needle felt in the fold. And I always start framing at the face first. Um, and start with your, um, you can use a fine needle or a medium needle. This is my 40 triangle because I just want to make sure it is where I want it. So I'm d starting right in the middle. I have a fold in the lock of hair, if you will. I'm going to needle felt it right in there. So instead of stretching it across, I'm going to needle felt in that fold and then fold it over so she has a little more height to her hair. And you can let this part be the face frame. Oh, I need to stop right here. Uh, you can let this part be the, fa be the face frame or you can add little locks for the face frame. Now, if you wanna add the string um, to hang them, now is the time to do it. So here's my string and this is the same string that we have in the kit. And I just use a regular sewing needle. I should have tested this. This is not my sewing needle from home. <laughs> Should have made sure it fits. Um, what am I missing? I think there's a bun in the hair tutorial. Oh, they were talking about the hair tutorial yeah. in a video we have and the different hairstyles. Somebody was asking how to do a ballerina bun. I did not bring my sewing needle from home. You need a large eye needle, and this is not it. Um, we're, we're, you need a large eye needle, so I just want to show you that, I wish I had this now, a large eye needle, any needle will go right through the, the doll head and be able to hang there. Um, I like to go from side to side, so this thread will run through there, but I don't know if I have my doll needle. I don't know if I have a needle that I can thread. Do you want me to go grab a doll needle? Uh, no, it won't. It won't it's too big. Should have tested that. Here's a big one. Let's see if I can. I don't think the eye, this is an old doll needle. This is not our new one. So let's see if it'll go through. Guess we're just out of time, actually. I'm afraid. There. Okay, there's that. I got that on there. Now I just want to show you that it will it will go through. So I'm gonna run it through side by side, and you can run this thread. The thread will pull right through the wool there. So you just don't need a great big overlap. So there you go. That'll run right through. So you want to do that before you put the hair on, if you're going to, if you're going to make her a hanging, a hanging ornament. So we'll just tie that in on. These are super fun. Obviously, you can make their outfits however you want. Um, there we go. I'll trim that. And then we just keep putting the hair on. So. They love all the hair options, too, that you've even just given them now, all the different ways they can do their hair. No, oh. Yeah, there are there are lots of ways. A bun, I kind of, I, I kind of like long hair and some little braidy bits, but look, at, look how cute she is, just even with that little bit of hair. And you might, you know, you might like this hair on a more of a fair-skinned doll, but I do like to make it thinner. Um, and this is just this is just the wavy bit. So just work your way all around the doll until her hair is all fleshed out. These uh, dolls have such personality. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they are fun. I love the variety you can get from you know everyone making a different a different doll. But if you do take the time to treat the arms and the legs, then I think that over the years, if you do use it as a Christmas ornament, I think over the years you'll be really happy, you know, with how well it holds up to being handled. I know a lot of people have challenges with those little limbs, so. Okay. Somebody was asking how well the merino top hair will hold up. Right? It, you know, it'll hold up fine as long as you don't mash it, all, you know, as you put it away and, you know, take it in. Don't put it at the bottom of your ornament stack. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Just take care of it as you work with it. Um, yes, y'all want a ballerina bun. Okay, y'all make a ballerina bun. I'm not going to make a... So this, all of a sudden you go, oh, who's the front? Who's the back? <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's just see if we can finish her up for our our final, our final hurrah. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves the doll needles, so they're suggesting doll needles. Yeah, doll needles. Our doll needles are five inches long. So they're actually really, really long. And so this part is a little bit long back here, so I'm going to trim trim these two to match. And I didn't really, you know, cut them all down. So here we go. Here's our... Here's our three little dollies. We have suntan and you know style the hair as, as much as you want to or don't want to. But this is we have two two in suntan and one in espresso and three different hair colors. Lots of lots of fun to have and they all hang. You know they hang really well and they twirl. I think I got everything. Yeah, you I did. think we did. <laughs> you did. I think, I think we I think we covered everything. So. Um, Wow, I hope you have fun making your ballerinas. And you have some prizes to give away, Holly? We do. We do. Thanks, y'all, for felting with me and gluing with me today. Gluing and felting. <laughs> felting very little and gluing a lot today. But, you know, you, I'm not a purist. So for me, it's okay to um, break it up a little bit. Let me get this guy out of the way. It's that hot. Okay. Guy. Well, thank you all so much for filming <laughs> with me. And Holly's been over there writing down your names as you've been chiming into the conversation. Oh, yeah. so, and so what we're giving away a ballerina kit. We're giving away ballerina kits today. So we're going to draw two names right now. If we don't draw your name or if we didn't answer your question, uh, please leave a comment down below after the, the show is done uh, in the comments. And we'll do our best to get to it because we read them all all the time. Okay. Who do you got? I have Jane Hall. And I have Helen Onofrio. I think that's how you say it. Congratulations, gals, and thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for felting with us. Watch for the uh, short playback. We're looking for a good name for that playlist. Um, and, yeah, we are going to do our best to put together a condensed version of this one, I promise. So uh, you can shop with us or look for supplies on our site. We also have a Learn tab, so you can see all kinds of free videos we have available check us out our Facebook group we hang out there all week long and if you make something please do tag us on Instagram so we can see it yeah we love seeing them okay <laughs> happy holidays y'all we're gonna see you next week for our final final show it's gonna be a little bigger project I promise there's wings and <laughs> it's gonna be a time everybody crunch. wants wings <laughs> okay all right y'all we'll see you next time thank you bye, bye.